hopefully try and get some of my plants as you can see my tomatoes um, cucumbers and different things um, into the garden into the greenhouse hopefully um, as well as maybe plant some seeds and things like that maybe some beans and that our chance of frost is actually gone now so it's time to get that garden in and get it started So before I get started um, planting in the garden here, um, I thought I would show you a little surprise slash secret of what I've been working on. I started the end of January, beginning of February, and I wanted to see how it would go before I showed you. So anyways, I'm really excited about this and I think it's going to change the way that I do gardening. And it is called a little thing called winter sewing. I don't know if you've ever heard of it, but basically it's a concept um, that you create little greenhouses with plastic bottles. Um, they can be clear, they can have a white kind of transparency quite like this, but you can still get a lot of light through. And the concept is, is that you can plant your seedlings or your seeds, put your seeds in these jugs and put them outside in January or February in the middle of winter, stick them in the snow, let it snow and be cold and freeze all that it wants to and as the snow melts and as the weather warms up you'll get plants. The, the neat thing about this is that they're getting used to the temperatures gradually and you don't need to keep you know bringing your plants outside and bringing them in the house at night or if it's too sunny too hot too cold whatever um, it's just they're naturally being accustomed to the climate and the temperature so I thought that I would wait for the big revealing once the chance of frost is gone which it is so I haven't even opened them yet, but I know that it works, so I'm gonna show you. But what I'm gonna do first, before I show you how this worked out, is I'm gonna show you a clip back to January and February when I started these and how I did it. And I'm gonna put that clip in right here. Delphinium. Oh. I'm excited for those. I think they'll be really pretty in your garden. Yeah. So she's just putting the delphinium seeds. So we are out um, this is actually where my garden is. It goes all the way down past the greenhouse there. It's quite a large space. Um, this is probably the area that gets the most sun other than where my flower garden is out front. Um, so I thought, you know what, we would bring the flowers that we just um, sowed today and we would put them here. Just going to stick them in the snow. And uh, I'm going to wait and see what happens. It's snowing right now, as you can see. We're going to continue doing our winter sowing, and I have a feeling this is going to be quite filled up before long. So um, 
I'm just going to keep showing you my progress and how it goes and looking forward to when I can see some green sprouts come up and uh, we'll definitely be revealing that to you as well. Okay, so I just added about 14 more jars to my already existing few jars and this is what it looks like. Kind of neat, we got a lot of snow just yesterday actually. So they're in there, snug as a bug. Well, there's all my jugs. It only took about three, four days for all the snow to go from them. I've got about 27 or 28 jugs. What's going on in there? Nothing yet. So now that you've seen how I winter sowed my jugs and how they did out in like three and four feet of snow, I'm going to show you what I did now it is, so I did that in maybe like January, February, and it is now June 1st today. And I'm going to tell you, I have not watered these once, not once. I've been waiting to open these until I have you on camera with me because I didn't want to spoil the surprise beforehand. So I'm going to open them for the first time and we're going to see how they do and how they did. So I'm doing is taking the tape off that I put there, as you can see, like I said I've never done this before. This is my first year and this could literally save me a ton of work and a ton of money and a ton of time if this works out. So this is my cabbage which is something I normally would start indoors and plant out here. I mean, if I can do this up here in the north, you can do it anywhere. You're gonna love this. Check this out, like check it out. How cool is that? So I can literally take these, I don't know if you can see them or not, take these out one by one and literally put them and transplant them into my garden. And I didn't have to do anything except the prep work of the jug and uh, put the seeds in. This is amazing. Let's open the rest of the jugs. And the nice thing is, is I can take this jug and I can reuse it next year. I want you guys to try this next year too. You'll be amazed. Ooh, we've only got one, but hey, it's something. This is amazing. This is so amazing. I challenge you guys. I'm challenging you to try this next year. My broccoli! How cool is that? I did a couple, I started a couple indoors because I wasn't sure how this was going to go. I've got six broccoli out here and there's probably 12 broccoli in this little jar. So there's twice as much as I did in the house and they take up room. Keep these open until you're ready to plant them. They can stay open now. Sun can get them, the rain can get them, and as you gradually can get them out of here and put them in the ground, they're ready. Got some flowers, you can do flowers too. It doesn't have to be just vegetables. So these are the Sweet Williams. Check that out. Look at all this little plants. 
This is awesome. This is so cool. So something I've never grown before is celery, but we eat so much celery. We love celery. And because it's more wet here, it should grow well. I grew it in a pot bottle. Look at all the celery plants and they transplant well. Um, I've heard that they're so easy to transplant, so easy to grow, and there's a ton of celery in here. Oh, I did some bunching onion. Remember that? Bunching onions. This is amazing. This is totally amazing. I did some lupins, some flowers, some perennial flowers again. Woo! Check out the lupins. One, two, three, four, four plants in there. I planted mammoth dill. Oh, check out all of my dill. We'll be making pickles this year. <laughs> Another one is sorrel. Uh, I really like this. It's kind of like got a lemony zest to it. It's kind of like lettuce. It's very nutritious for you, very healthy. It's a perennial, but the chickens love it. So I planted some last year, the year before. Look at this. It's like lettuce. This is amazing. Look at it all. It's my cauliflower. I have to say, this is the real duct tape. It's coming off a lot better than the dollar store stuff. Well, I know for next year. Anyway, so that's my little secret I've been keeping from you guys. But like I said, I wanted to see how it did before I showed you. And you know what I'd say, you know, give it a try. I think it's totally worked out. I'm gonna do it again, for sure. So next on the agenda to do planting is my zucchinis, which I know you can get a lot of zucchinis from one plant, but we do so much with zucchinis that I love them. We make burgers out of them, I dehydrate them, I make soups out of them, freeze them. Um, there's a lot you can do. Um, so I got Black Beauty zucchini, which is one of my favorites. I have... Um, the gray zucchini, which is another favorite, and our favorite soup zucchini that we use for soups is the golden, sweet golden yellow zucchini. I don't normally plant them over here, but since the chickens don't seem to bother them, I'm planting them outside the fence this year. Um, I usually plant them in there, and usually I plant my cabbage over here, but they seem to like cabbage, so I'm going to grow my cabbage inside the fence. Hello, Doris. Doris doesn't miss a thing, I'm telling you. Do you? Yes, yes. What would you like? Don't you eat my seeds, girl. So here I just went in the house and grabbed a new one. It is a golden summer uh, zucchini squash. That's a yellow zucchini from MI Gardener. Um, we haven't tried this one, but the yellow ones are pretty much all the same. 
Um, the yellow ones are specifically great for soups, um, for creamy soups and making noodles with. And, uh, you know, they grow in about 65 days. So they're the perfect thing for up here. And our favorite thing to do with the yellow is definitely the soups. They make delicious soup, which I am going to show you um, at some point how to make delicious zucchini soup. It is so good. Hannah tells me, come quick, there's three chicks on her back. So we'll come over, have a peek and see. Well, we got one on her back. This one was on my back too. And she's got Jazzy the rooster on her back. We're getting so big. Okay, off you go. Thank you. The blue laced red wine dots. And I don't know if you can. Ah! <laughs> Apparently, I've got a visitor now, too. What do you want? Get out. I'm telling you. Well, they're nice chicks. They're friendly, friendly chicks. So this here is the blue laced red wine dots we got from uh, Maplescape Farms in Odessa, Ontario. And you can see her color is phenomenal. Like she, I'm hoping that we have some females because gorgeous, just gorgeous. All right, so before I head in, I remember that I wanted to plant um, some squash. And so what I have here is the Burgess Buttercup Squash which is one of my favorites that I really enjoy. Makes great soups. Uh, it does, you, I mean, you can do pumpkin pies with it. You can do anything with the squash. So the reason why I'm going to do this is to utilize my space. Then I'm utilizing the space on the top here that has no plants and I'm, I'm getting the most value out of the space that I have and hopefully that I can have a lot of squash. So squash is a really good thing to put away. Um, in the fall when you take it when you pick them they last quite a while with like up until the winter so um depending on how you store them so i recommend growing squash i mean if you have nothing else but squash uh, you can do a lot of different things with it so anyways i'm just going to pop a couple of these in i have other squash that i'm going to plant somewhere else too So this is today's picking, how much we got from it. So every two days we get about that much, which is well more than what we need per day for our family. Can't wait to eat it. Yeah. So I pretty much have planted what I can plant today, I think. She's interrupting. Anyways, we've got the zucchinis in. We got the beans in and I'd like to really try to plant my tomatoes. So it's kind of been off and on cloudy, so it might be an okay day to put them out, but I definitely did not want to put them out at like one and two in the afternoon, just because it is the hottest part of the day. So you're asking for like a burnt crisp plant by doing that. Planting them in the morning, in the evening is probably the best thing I'd recommend doing. So I hope you enjoyed this video today. Just got a couple things in the garden. Uh, showed you my winter sowing that I did and I am so happy with that. I really hope you try it. Um, I think it will save a lot of time and I don't know, a lot of work really. A lot of effort that goes into gardening and I really hope that whatever you're doing works well for you and I hope that you have an abundance of food because I think this year especially, um, you know, getting some food for ourselves in the garden is quite essential just considering everything going on in the world these days. Um, until next time, don't forget to subscribe, don't forget to hit that bell icon, leave us a few comments, you know, it really helps out our channel, it really helps us get seen out in the uh, YouTube world, and uh, leave, us a, uh, leave us a link, maybe we can check out your YouTube as well if you got one.